friends i'm sumit bansal i will be taking you a session on wi-fi wherein we will be discussing everything on wi-fi in detail so that even a layman can understand so without wasting time let's begin our basic day one session okay in this day one uh, for uh, following is our agenda we will cover wi-fi history various wi-fi standard organizations Wi-Fi standards and its evolution. So why Wi-Fi? So wireless fidelity, which is popularly known as Wi-Fi, uh, started in the uh, during the Second World War. U.S. U.S. military used uh, spread spectrum technology to send the signals, encrypted signals. So that was the very first time that uh, wireless networking technology came into the picture. But even after the two decades, there was no significant development on this technology. Then finally, in 1971, Aloha Net, uh, also known as Aloha, was pioneering in computer networking system, developed at the Hawaiian uh, University of Hawaii. They connected the Hawaiian island with UHF wireless packet network. UHF is ultra high frequency. So medium as there was no spectrum allocated at that time so they use UHF wireless uh, technology to connect the uh, uh, university uh, Hawaiian Island so then after almost a decade 1985 FCC released the ISM band for unlicensed use so FCC is a federal communication Commission of uh, U.S. independent uh, uh, independent U.S. government agency. They are they have released they had released ISM band ISM again uh, industrial scientific and medical radio band for unlicensed use. So it's unlicensed spectrum in two point four gigahertz frequency. Then in 1991, NCR Corporation with AT&T invented the precursor to 802.11 or 802.11. So 802.11 is a specifications or standards for Wi-Fi. So we will look into detail what 802.11 mean and because it's a very important uh, uh, part of our study and uh, Wi-Fi and we will use this throughout the uh, our training session then in 1992 and 1996 CSIRO obtained patents for method later used in Wi-Fi so CSIRO is Commonwealth Scientific and Industrial Research Organization of Australian uh, government so they have patented the method used in Wi-Fi. The, so that's why it is attributed as why Australians are father uh, father of Wi-Fi. Then 1997, the very first version of 802.11 protocol was released. After this, there were many protocols which were released and still now it is getting released and we are going to discuss on this in coming uh, slides. Okay. So now we will look into the various standard organizations and the role of it. It's very important from exam perspective. We should know um, what is the role of these organization and what each and every organization do. First is Internet Engineering Task Force. It they provide and they develop and document network technologies and provide RFCs request for comments. Then second one is FCC. So here we have written FCC, but each country has its own regulatory domains or they may follow FCC as well because FCC was the one who first uh, used, uh, uh, released the unlicensed spectrum channels and they guide uh, shared the guidelines. So they more or less all the regulatory domains have the same uh, regulatory uh, regulations, but there are many different organizations throughout the globe. Each country has its own or they may follow one global uh, standardization. So they are responsible for channel, frequency, indoor, outdoor operation guidelines, certify systems. So FCC is responsible for this. Then the third one is IEEE. 
IEEE as I said 802.1 is the baseline which provides a physical and data link specifications for uh, Wi-Fi so this standard was written by IEEE then the fourth one is Wi-Fi Alliance Wi-Fi Alliance provides device certifications interoperability testing white papers and specifications so if you uh, look at any access point it will be written as Wi-Fi certified then you need not to worry you can assume that it is interoperable and tested as per the standard specifications then the last one is ISO ISO is International Organization for Standardization they are responsible for creation of OSI model layer 7 model use which has been standard reference for data communication so these are the major standard organizations who are responsible for standardization of the product then now we are going to look into Wi-Fi standard and its evolution so this is just a brief in the later videos so we will see in detail about each and every standard what is the benefits of this standard what is their modulation technique all things will be there and you will find this uh, this standards throughout your training session the very first standard was released in 1997 that was 802.11 or 11 they, it is no more in use then in 1999 802.11b was released it operates in 2.4 gigahertz frequency at the same time 802.11a was also released it operates in 5 gigahertz frequency then 802.11g was released in 2003 it combines the benefits of both a and b released in 1999 then in 80, uh, 2009 802.11 n was released so a major advancement was done a MIMO technology was included in it we will discuss in detail what is MIMO how it function and what is the benefits of it then in 80, uh, 2014 802.11 AC was released and it includes furthermore enhancements on the 11.11 n there are many more standards were released after to uh, AC as well but this is the most important and currently used standards there are others we will discuss if uh, a basics about later on but these are the standard which is going to be used throughout your uh, curriculum so <clears throat> now we will discuss why wi-fi so very important thing because we have a mobile broadband networks we have a um, mobile operators available so why wi-fi is becoming so popular a very f important thing about the wi-fi is that Wi-Fi operates in unlicensed spectrum from operator point of view they don't need to pay any fees to the government or organizations in their country to operate Wi-Fi if you want to operate 3G, 4G, 5G you have to buy a spectrum and you have to pay a spectrum fees to the uh, regulatory body of that country like in India TRI is the regulatory and DOT is the regulatory body so every operator has to pay a spectrum fees to the government to operate in that particular spectrum but Wi-Fi is an unlicensed spectrum it's free of cost so it's very very lucrative for operators to offer the services over Wi-Fi to end user as with the increase in more and more uh, devices day by day their data consumption is increasing so for operators to offer data and uh, with seamless data and high speed data it is they have to be buy more and more spectrum so if they buy more spectrum then definitely they have to be incur a huge cost to avoid this cost they can offer the services over wi-fi because wi-fi is an unlicensed spectrum the second most important benefit of Wi-Fi is that its time to market is very less as compared to mo mobile network. Its cost effectiveness very cheap and easy to deploy. And then the very fourth uh, important thing about that all the new technologies are, are uh, evolved around Wi-Fi like IoT. IoT for IoT to be IoT to be successful, Wi-Fi has to be evolved uh, uh, properly. Like all all our devices, like our, your uh, AC, LED TV, your fan, everything is Wi-Fi enabled these days. So Wi-Fi is the baseline for IoT as well. So that's why Wi-Fi is increasing significantly. 
so now friends we will uh, take a quiz after our each session we will be having a short quiz so that we can quickly revise what we learnt in the last few minutes the answer will be provided to you in the next video so let's go to the quiz part so which organization is responsible for Wi-Fi device certification below are the four options you have to be select one out of this and that's a question too which of the following 802.11 standards support both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz frequencies so below are the options thank you friends uh, we will connect soon and i will be ready with the next video and we then we will learn on the uh, basics of rf thank you thanks a lot